Good morning, everybody. Lee Brower here, coming to you live from Santa Monica. Uh, last week, I said that um, we were going to be talking about there is nothing as unequal as the equal treatment of unequals. I'm going to put that aside um, with your permission. Uh, I am glad to be here today because I'm here with Lori, my wife, and uh, we needed to spend this time together. Uh, three years ago today, uh, our son passed away. He got his angel wings, Nick. And I thought it would be good to share with you some of the learning that we have continued to learn from his life and the way that he lived it. Um, Ten days prior to Nick leaving, um, I had the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with him, a private moment. Among other things that we talked about, he expressed gratitude for his life, his family, his beliefs, his many friends, his experiences and the experiences, even in the experiences of the last four years. He said he was ready for what comes next, and after a short and thoughtful pause, and then a little grin that only Nick could make, he said, I think I've earned a few brownie points. If you define success as the peace of mind that comes from the self-satisfaction of knowing that you've made the effort to become the very best you can become, then Nick was very, very successful. May I share with you three things that Nick learned? I've shared some of these before, but I'm gonna give you some examples of the three things that he shares with us. And number one on his list was that to give back through service to others. Not just having gratitude for gratitude's sake, but to give back by being of service to others. And uh, to give you a little bit about the way that Nick was uh, in his attitude, he was constantly thankful to others. He constantly thanked those that uh, attended him and worked with him. No matter what happened, he always said thank you afterwards. Uh, the many treatments that might have been painful or uncomfortable, he said thank you. Uh, he was quietly working to help other people behind the scenes that so many people would never know about. His mother was at his side through most of that. And together they performed quiet gratitudes of service. And then, um, but to give you the real idea, one time we were sitting there talking and a good friend of ours who was going through some very tough times, he had been in a um, uh, a four-wheeling accident and he was paralyzed from the chest down. Uh, just a wonderful example to us of somebody with amazing gratitude and amazing courage. Two little children, a beautiful wife. And then he had just called and announced to us that his wife um, had cervical cancer and uh, and ultimately she didn't make it. But when we got that notice, I sat down with Nick and I we talked about that. He just says, I can't believe what some people go through. And I said, well, you know, Nick, there's, a, there's kind of a saying that says if everybody in the world threw all their troubles into the one big pile and could go back and pick just one out for themselves, most everybody would end up with the same one that they threw in. And he sat there thinking about that for a while and he got very contemplative and he said, I wouldn't pick up mine. And I could understand that and Lori and I both understood that and it was a very quiet moment and I could tell he was still thinking. And as he was thinking, he looked up and said, unless it meant that somebody else had to take mine, then I would pick mine up. And I thought, wow, isn't that indicative of the attitude that he has? So number one, begin in gratitude. Always look for ways that you can be of service to others. The second thing is that always have something meaningful that's big to look forward to, that's aligned with your values. And truly, Nick had that. I'm going to read to you some of the things. I'm going to read it rather quickly, otherwise we'll be here all morning. But in the four years that he was living with cancer, I made a list of some of the things, just some of the things that he achieved in those four years. So listen carefully. He graduated from high school while in treatment. He did a sarcoma walk for charity and boating with a feeding tube. Took a trip with his mom and sisters to Dana Point. Went to Boise for the NCAA Regionals. He ran the Relay for Life, Lancaster, California. Rode in a Black Hawk helicopter. He rode the Zamboni at the pink night with the Utah Grizzle. Grizzlies, pink on the ice, met the team and got their autograph afterwards. Uh, did a weekend drill with the Utah National Guard. Took a trip to New York City where he ice skated at the Rockefeller Center. Attended a Penguin Islanders hockey game. Trip to Boston. Met Andre Karolinko, the great basketball player, and his wife. He also met Lance Armstrong. He also met John Huntsman. He raced dirt bikes. He took a trip to San Diego SeaWorld. He took his second sarcoma walk. Made his first trip with first descents to Glacier National Park. And um, that's what triggered Wacky and came back and started Wacky the Foundation, which is Warriors Against Cancer and Kids and Young Adults, like this emblem that's on my shirt. Um, 
he um, did his first charitable softball tournament. He went to Owen Sound, Canada with our good friends Jay and Ann Patterson. Uh, worked at Deer Valley to earn money for college. Trained for a team triathlon, spoke in church, uh, first skydive with the Navy SEAL. He ran an obstacle course at the SEAL headquarters. Cowboy trip to Moab with a very good friend, his very good friend Colin. A second trip with First Ascents to Glacier Park. He received the Peterson uh, Inc. Award. Um, he flew in a, in a stunt plane, took a trip in Colorado for kayaking and skydiving, skydiving again. Second annual charitable softball tournament. Did a buffalo roundup. You have to understand, Nick was allergic to horses prior to the chemo, but the chemo cured it. So then all of a sudden he learned how to rope and ride horses during this time as well. Trip to California, uh, went to the beach in the Penguin Keys, Kings hockey game. Trip to Moab, interned for a season with the Grizzlies. Took a trip to Spokane for the NCAA regionals. Trip to Vail for, a, for the first descent's charity ball. Trip to Moab, trip to Philly, first wacky event, which was a 10 mile Broad Street run. Uh, ran in the Ogden 5K as Buzz Lightyear. Worked as the ranch hand in Moab. Um, enrolled as a sophomore at the U University of Utah. Took his third trip with First Ascents to Vail as a counselor. He had the third annual charity softball event. Received monthly award for the Les Schwab Do the Right Thing. Fishing and kayaking at Strawberry Reservoir. Trip to Moab. Trip to Wyoming fishing. Philadelphia Flyers versus the Penguins. Went to the locker room, met many of the players, and had his picture taken with Chris Pronger. Disneyland, Las Vegas, Newport Beach, National Rodeo Finals in Las Vegas, received the annual award for the whole state of Utah for the Les Schwab Do the Right Thing Award. Trip to Arizona, visited the Grand Canyon, Denver NCAA Regionals, First Ascents Ball in, in Vail again, counselor for the First Ascents Climbing Camp. And to cap it off, he was the bridesmaid for his one of his best friends, uh, Mikkel, at her wedding. This does not include Numerous weekends of time spent with other family members that range from water skiing to just hanging out. Not included are three semesters of college, 28 rounds of chemo, 56 radiation treatments, three major surgeries, several minor surgeries, and 135 days in the hospital. Wow, Nick, I can't believe you did all that in just four years. So this year, as we dedicate ourselves to making this the most meaningful year of our lives, I want you to think about what this young man, at, starting at age 18 in four years, accomplished in just those four years, when he set his eyes and his heart on thinking about others, providing service through gratitude, having something bigger to look forward to, and the third thing was always have fun. Always have fun. So it's my wish for you, and it's for me, and it's for all of us, that as we make our attempt to live every second, that we'll remember those three things because those three things will truly make us better. And as we make ourselves better, we make the world better. Or maybe better said, as we make the world better, we make ourselves better. Have a meaningful week. I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.